The reign of Suryavarman II marks the return of stability after some roughly 30 years of turmoil and fragmentation. He probably grew up on an estate in the countryside and appears to have begun maneuvering for power already as a young prince. He first defeated a king ruling at Angkor, probably in Ripatin Ravarman, and then turned on his great uncle, the aging and largely ineffectual king Darnin Ravarman. Inscriptions describe Suryavarman's victory in combat, although it's not sure against which of his rivals. They say, quote, Leaving on the field of combat the ocean of his armies, he delivered a terrible battle, and, bounding on the head of the elephant of the enemy king, he killed him as Garuda on the edge of a mountain would kill a serpent. Thus, the empire was reunited. In 1113, Suryavarman was enthroned, and in 1119 he had his official coronation. On both occasions, the ceremony was undertaken by an old Brahmin called Deva Karapandita. He had been the one to elevate two previous kings as well, and was now sent on a long tour of the temples of the empire, during which he is said to provide that of Priya Vihar with a golden statue of the dancing Shiva. The new king would become known as a formidable military campaigner. He launched campaigns into northern and southern Thailand, as well as into Champa and Dai Viet, a precursor state of Vietnam consisting of the northern part of the modern country. According to accounts by writers from there, he launched no less than three invasions of that country, which, however, were all unsuccessful. One of them consisted of no less than 20,000 men, and on another one, he is said to have convinced the king of Champa to aid him. This king later made peace with the Daiviet, however, and refused to help with any more expeditions. Upon hearing this, Suryavarman invaded Champa, sacking its capital of Vijaya, and for a while managed to replace the king with his wife's younger brother, Harideva. Suryavarman could also practice diplomacy. Already in 1114, he sent a mission to Emperor Kulotunga Chola I in southern India, presenting him with a precious stone. He also established formal relations with China, sending embassies in 1116, 1120, and in 1128. His most famous act as ruler must be the construction of Angkor Wat, the largest temple in the capital, and in fact the largest religious structure in the world. Unlike most Khmer temples which are dedicated to Shiva, Angkor Wat was made for Vishnu, which may explain why it faces west and not east. The temple would eventually serve as Suryavarman's tomb, but was probably also an astronomical observatory. It boasts a total of 1,860 carved apsara, or heavenly nymphs, and is covered with hundreds of meters of elaborate reliefs. They depict events from the Indian epics of Mahabharata and Ramayana, confirming that these texts were widely known at Angkor. They also, for the first time in Khmer art, depict the king himself. Suryavarman appears to be sitting outside, under a forest of fans and parasols held up by his attendants. Advisors look on, kneeling, some with hands over their hearts in a gesture of deference. We don't know exactly when Suryavarman II died, but it's thought to have been sometime between 1145 and 1150. Following his death, a new period of instability begins. Initially, his cousin, Darn Enderwaman II, comes to power. All we know about him is that he seems to have sent two elephants as tribute to the Emperor of China. He is superseded by Yasuvarman II in 1160, who completes some of Suryavarman's building projects, and is after a couple of years assassinated by Tribhuvanaditya. This king manages to hold on to power, despite repeated rebellions until the Champa under Jaya Indravarman III invades in 1177, killing him and looting Angkor. Stability was finally restored under Jayavarman VII, who came to power in 1181. 